Hello students, greetings from Firebird Institute of Research and Management. So the next free class we are going to conduct is on February 28th, Tuesday at 7 p.m. And this free class is going to be completely different. And in this session, we are going to cover mathematical skills and data analysis problem solving techniques. And also we are going to give you important Q&A questions. And we are going to discuss those questions, how to solve those questions in a very less time okay so don't forget to register for this webinar and join this webinar on feb 28 tuesday at seven o'clock this webinar will be useful for the upcoming uh may mat aspirants as well as those who are going to take their ibt exams on in the month of march okay if you want to register for this free class we have provided the registration link in the description box with that you can join or if you have any queries related to this free class you can also contact double eight seven double zero four six zero eight zero all the best students i'll meet you on feb 28 tuesday at seven o'clock and already we have uploaded some questions and answers based on february math question paper and in this video we are going to upload feb question paper mathematical skills part two that is the questions which was asked in the February mat itself so you can ex see you cannot expect the same question but you can expect the similar type of questions and in this uh, video I'm going to give you five questions I'm going to discuss five questions in that one question was based on mensuration the question based on time speed and distance one question based on trigonometry one question based on profit and loss and one question based on geometry. So keep it in mind that when it comes to 40 questions in mathematical skills, so they used to cover all the topics, right? And now let us see a question based on mensuration. See, here to solve this type of question, you need to have some practice, some basic practice in mathematical skills. See, you should know basic mathematical skills. Unless you know the basic mathematical skills, it is very difficult to solve the question. See, when I took this uh, question initially, I just, well, while reading the question itself, I just think, thought that, okay, it is easy, but it involved a few calculations to get the correct answer. So let me solve this question very uh, in a step-by-step. -step. See, it is very easy, right? If the volume of a cube and sphere are equal, what is the volume of a cube? We all know it is a cube. And volume of a sphere is nothing but 4 by 3 pi r cube. When both are equal, find the ratio of their surface area. What is this uh, surface area of a sphere? That is total surface area of a cube is 6a square. And total surface area of a sphere, we call it a surface area. We don't call it as uh, total surface area of a sphere. It is around 4 pi r square. Okay, 4 pi r square. See, now, if we have to, from the first condition they have given, the first condition they have given is what? Volume of a cube and sphere are equal. Okay, from this you have to derive the relation between A and R. So, that is A by R is equal to A cube by R cube is equal to 4 by 3 pi. Okay, I can take it as A by R, the whole cube is equal to 4 by 3 pi. So, A by R is equal to cubic root of 4 by 3 into pi. Okay, this is the relation. So, you can also write A by R is equal to 4 by 3 pi, the whole to the power 1 by 3. You can also write like this. Okay, now they are asking us to find the ratio of their surface area. See, ratio of the surface area is what? A, uh, surface area of a cube divided by surface area of a sphere. Okay, surface area of a sphere. This is the ratio, okay. It is equal to, I can write this as 6 by 4 pi A by R, the whole square. I know that A by R is equal to 4 by 3 pi whole to the power 1 by 3. We also have the square value. So, then I can write it as 6 by 4 pi, right. So, 4 by 3 pi whole to the power 2 by 3. Now, you have to know some basic concepts. You should know basic concepts on exponents part to solve this, okay? So, I have, I'm going to split and write this. So, let us write the 6 by 4 as it is, 6 by 4 pi and split this inside. 4 to the power 2 by 3. 
and pi to the power 2 by 3 divided by 3 to the power 2 by 3, right? Okay, now you should know the basic concepts like a power m into a power n is equal to a to the power m plus n. And a power m divided by a power n is equal to a to the power m minus n. Okay, so coming back. So 6 by 4 pi, I can write this as, see, 6 by 4 pi, I can rewrite this as, okay, right? 6, I can write it as 2 into 3. Okay, 4 to the power 2 by 3 minus 1. Why this minus 1? 4 power 1. This here, we have 4 power 1. When 4 power 1 goes to the numerator, it becomes minus 1. And similarly, pi to the power 2 by 3 minus 1. The whole divided by, right, 3 to the power 2 by 3. Okay, now you can write this as 2 into 3 to the power 1 minus 2 by 3. That is a power m is equal to 1 by a power minus m. Or you can also write it as a power minus m is equal to 1 by a power m. Okay. And what is 4 to the power 2 by 3? The whole divided by take as 1. Okay. 2 by 3 minus 1 is what? Minus 4 to the power 1 by 3. And here it is what? Pi to the power minus 1 by 3. Okay. So, I will get the value as 2 into 3 minus 1. 3 to the power 1 by 3 into 4 I can write as 2, 2 square. So, 2 to the power minus 2 by 3 into pi to the power minus 1 by 3. See, pi to the power minus 1 by 3, a power minus m, I can write it as 1 by a power m. So, cubic root of pi will come in the denominator. Okay, now 2 power 1, 2 power minus 2 by 3. So, 2 power 1 minus 2 by 3 into t to the power 1 by 3 which is equal to, you can write this as 2 to the power 1 by 3 into 3 to the power 1 by 3 divided by cubic root of pi. Okay, so now 2 into 3 is what? 6 to the power 1 by 3 divided by cubic root of pi. Okay, so 6 to the power 1 by 3 is nothing but cubic root of 6 divided by cubic root of pi. So, option C is your answer. See, even though if you know the formulas of cube and sphere, it is easy. You should also know the exponents values, exponents formulas to solve these kind of problems. It is a tough question which was asked in this uh, question, uh, February math question. Okay, now, we'll go to the next question. See, some questions are there where we need to solve the uh, solve from the given options, right? See, from station A and B, two trains start moving towards each other. When the two trains are moving in opposite direction, we have to say about their, we have to speak here about their relative speed. Relative speed, it is nothing but when two trains are moving in opposite direction, their relative speed will be some of their speed, that is 280 km per hour. When the two trains meet each other, it is found that one train covers 60 km more than the other train. Okay, find the distance between the trains. So, what is the basic formula for time, speed and distance? Time is equal to distance by speed. Okay, if I take option A as the correct answer, okay, the, if I take the distance between two stations as uh, 240 kilometer, okay, time taken to cover 240 kilometer will be equal to distance 240 kilometer divided by, that is time taken by the two trains to meet at a point will be equal to distance 240 divided by their relative speed. So, 240 divided by relative speed, I will get 6 by 7. Six, there is no nothing. So, I cannot fix time. It is very hard to divide time in terms of 7, right? So, let us keep as it is. We will move to the next option. So, I will check whether what is the... Because 280 is fixed, right? Because 280 is fixed. Why it is fixed? It is a relative speed. So, I have to check the values which are in multiples of 7, right? So, 280, it comes under 7. So, same... 420. If I take 420, time is equal to distance by speed. Time is equal to 240. Sorry, 420. Distance, let us take this 420 by 280. I'll get around 42 by 28. 42 by 28 is around what? If I cancel in terms of 6, 6 by 4, it is equal to 3 by 2 hours. 3 by 2 hours is nothing but 1 and a half hours. That is, the time taken by both the train to cover, to meet at a point is 1 and a half hours. Okay, now, now that 
time uh, distance traveled by a distance traveled by train a in one and a half hours in one hour it will cover 160 km right and another half an hour 80 km 240 km okay and distance covered by b in this one hour okay now what is the distance covered by b in this one hour 120 plus 60 what is 120 plus 60 180 So, what is the difference? The difference between the two trains, the distance between the two trains is what? Sixty kilometer. That is one train. This uh, train A has covered sixty kilometer more than train B. So, it satisfies my given condition. So, the correct answer is four twenty kilometers, my sir. Okay. So, you should know some shortcuts to solve these kinds of problem. And this is a question based on trigonometry. But uh, so most of if you are in your last minute, try to avoid trigonometry questions because definitely uh, the questions are specific. See here, a plus b is equal to one eighty degree, and I can write that one b is equal to what, or a is equal to one eighty degree minus b, right? What is tan a? Tan a instead in the place of a, I can write it as one eighty minus b. Tan one eighty minus theta is nothing but tan theta. What is tan one eighty minus theta? Tan theta tan b. Okay, so I know that tan y value is seven by two. Okay, if tan y value is equal to seven by two, which is equal to tan b, and my and question is cot b. What is cot b? Tan and cot are inverse, right? One by cot is what? Tan. So two by seven. So the answer for my question is two by seven. Okay, hope it is very simple question. You can answer, but if you should know the concept. And this question is very interesting. This is a question based on profit and loss. A factory was sold at a loss of twelve percentage. If the factory would have been sold for rupees, the loss of twelve percentage means I have sold it for only eighty-eight percentage of the cost price. Okay, if the factory would have been sold for rupees two lakhs ten thousand more, then there would have been a profit of eighteen percentage. So eighteen percentage means that is you have sold the pro, uh, factory for a one one eight percentage of the cost price. The difference in cost is what two lakhs ten thousand. That means thirty percentage difference will give you two lakhs ten thousand. And my question is, at what price the factory should be sold to make a profit of twenty two percentage? If you, I want a profit of twenty two percentage, I need to calculate for one twenty two percentage of the cost price. Okay, so zero zero will get cancelled three one times. Here it is seven thousand. Seven thousand into one twenty two, I'll get the value around eight lakh. Fifty-four thousand is my answer, right? Now we'll move to the next question. Two parallel chords of a circle whose diameter are thirteen centimeter, or respectively. Okay, so diameter of a circle is thirteen centimeter, right? Five centimeter, and the two chords. Have their length as five centimeter, and another chord have their length as twelve centimeter. Okay, they both lie on the same side of the diameter. So let us take it as it is. Now, if I consider the first chord, take this point as center C, A point, B point. Diameter of the circle they have given as thirteen centimeter, and the radius will be six point five. And I know that center of the circle. If I draw a line, it will divide the chord into two equal halves. Then it is six. Okay. So if I apply Pythagoras theorem, I can find the AC. Okay. I can find the value of AC. Okay. So AC is equal to six point five square minus six square. What is six point five square? Forty two square root of six point five square is thirty six. This is equal to square root of six point two five. What is square root of six point two five? Two point five zero. And now let us fix a point. Another point D. Yeah, I have to count. And I know that yeah, D E and C E is nothing but same six point five. And D E value will be two point five, right? And now I have to calculate for C D. C D is equal to square root of six point five square minus two point five square. Okay, so six point five square is nothing but forty two point two five, and two point five square is nothing but six point two five. The difference is square root of thirty six. Square root of thirty six is six. What is the difference? It makes three point five centimeters. My answer. Okay, now 
so you got some ideas based on the questions right so in this video we have uh, seen a question based on mensuration time speed and distance trigonometry profit and loss and geometry so keep it in mind that in math mathematical skills part they have covered all the topics right don't forget to join our free class on feb 28 tuesday at 7 pm in this free class we are going to give you the tips and tricks about mathematical skills and data analysis and we are also going to solve few questions based on the uh, previous year questions for mat exam right so if you want to enroll for this free class we have provided the link in the registration uh, description box with that you can register for this free class the free class is to be held on feb 28 tuesday at 7 o'clock those who are planning to make uh, take their mat exam in the month of may as well as in the month of march you can apply for this free class thank you all and also wait for the next video in our next video we are going to post feb question paper mathematical skills part 3 thank you all guys learn to lead we make winners who lead